So in this example, we're going to learn how you can maximize utility um, or maximize happiness given budget constraints um, and preferences. So what we're going to imagine is that somebody has some preference for two different things. We're going to be talking about waffles and calzones. Um, and we want to figure out how many waffles and calzones this person should consume given the budget that they have and given how much they like waffles and calzones and how expensive those things are. So we're going to combine all of these different details um, into one math problem um, where we can figure out the maximum level of happiness that we can get from consuming these things. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a blank paper here. Um, actually, no, we're going to show you the question. So what we have is this is all we need to know here, that this person has a budget of $20. Um, they can buy some number of waffles. Every waffle is $1. And they can buy some number of calzones. Every calzone is $2. Um, they also get utility from eating calzones and waffles. And their utility function is just going to be this x times y thing because this makes it simpler. Um, so all this means is if they eat three waffles and three calzones, that's going to be three times three. That's going to give nine utils of happiness. Um, that's, that's the utility here. So we want to find the number of waffles and calzones that will maximize utility, but also stay within our budget. So we're not going to, like, we could maximize utility if we ate, like, a million waffles, sure, but we don't have a million dollars to spend on that. We only have $20. So we want to figure out the right combination of X and Y that will let us have a good, um, the, the highest utility we can within this budget here. So let's go ahead and do this. So what we're gonna do um, is first we need to draw the budget line. We need to figure out the feasible set, what we can actually consume. So to do this, we'll draw a quick little graph here. So here's our graph. Down here we will put waffles. And here we'll put calzones. Okay, so if we spent all $20 solely on waffles, we would be able to purchase 10 waffles or 20 waffles because every waffle is a dollar. Okay, so we have, if we put 20 here, that means this is 10, this is 5, this is 15. Sure, not super accurate, but it's good enough. Okay, so if we spent all of our money on waffles, we would get 20 waffles. Okay, if we spent all of our money in calzones, those are $2 each. So that means we could get um, 10 calzones, which we'll put here. So that's 10 and there's five. So if we spent all our money in calzones, that would let us get 10. If we connect this line like so, that creates our feasible set or our budget line. So if we wanted to buy, for instance, five waffles and five calzones, we can afford that. That is within the realm of possibility. That would cost five times one is five, five times two is 10. That would cost $15 and we still have $5 left over, which is why it's not on that line. It's not like, um, it's in our feasible set, but it's not like ideal. We could actually get a little bit more happiness if we spent more money. If we wanted to hit this point right here um, and buy 10 waffles and 10 calzones, which is actually here, um, we can't actually do that. We can't afford it. It's outside of our budget. Um, it would cost, so 10 times 10, that'd be $10. And then the calzones are $2 each, so that's $20. So that would be 20 plus 10 equals 30. We can't afford that. So we can't actually hit that point. So there's no way we can hit anything beyond that limit. So that's our budget line, okay? So what we want to do is we wanna figure out the slope of that line um, and the actual equation for this line. So the marginal rate of transformation here is the, the equation for this line. So we can write this as y equals mx plus b um, and then we can get an actual equation for this. So to do that, we can first figure out the y-intercept. It starts at 10. So it's going to be something like, um, so y equals something x plus 10. 
okay because it starts at 10 and then it, it changes from there so if we want to figure out how much of a change there is we could say if we go down to 9 what would that be here and then we go down one over and down one over but that's tricky um, because we can't actually see it and this isn't super accurate so what we can do instead is we can say it's rise over run so we're going to go down 10 so it's going to equal negative 10 over 20. so we're going down 10 over 20. Um, we can simplify that if we just get rid of those zeros and so that means it is negative 1 half x plus 10. so that's our budget line and that's the equation for our budget line here is this y equals negative 1 half x plus 10. And that will tell us um, that is our rate of transformation. We can transform waffles into calzones using this formula. Um, and that will tell us the opportunity cost of giving up numbers of waffles for calzones or numbers of calzones for waffles. So that is the first part of our uh, utility maximization here. Um, we now know, let's circle that, we now know the marginal rate of transformation. Wow. There we go. Okay, but next we want to figure out happiness and utility and um, indifference curves because we have some level of happiness that we get from consuming waffles and calzones. Okay, typically when you draw indifference curves, you don't actually care about how perfect they are. What you normally do is you just draw something that looks curvy like that. What this represents is all the combinations here of calzones and waffles give you the same level of happiness and who knows how much happiness that is we can call this like 40 points of happiness sure um, you also have another combination this might give you 20 units of happiness you might have another combination down here that might give you 10 units of happiness some level of happiness that you get from all of these different combinations of waffles and calzones. You could only eat waffles and very few calzones, and that would give you some level of, ha level of happiness. You could do a mixture. You could only do calzones and very few waffles. It's all going to be the same happiness. That's this idea of the indifference curve. Every point on this line gets you the same level of utility. Okay, But what we care about is we want to find where the slope of this indifference curve is the same as our budget line here. We want to find where the two meet, where the two are tangent. So to do that, we need to convert this um, equation here, our utility function, into a derivative. We have to figure out the slope of it. And to do that, we can just use Wolfram Alpha um, because that makes life a lot easier. So if we go to Wolfram Alpha, we want to figure out the derivative of this formula here. Our utility function is x over or x times y. So we can just come here and type derivative of, or just derivative u equals xy. And it will give us the x part and it will give us the y part. And we just make the ratio of those. So the x part is just y and the y part is just x which is fairly simple here. That's not always the case. Um, for instance, if the utility function was something like u, or u equals square root, sqrt, of x and y, then the x part and the y part will look something like this, far more complicated. And you would have to write y over 2xy over x over 2xy. And so that, that's a lot messier than what we had before, which is just y over x. So it's not always this simple. It just is in this formula because I made it simple. Okay, so if we go back to the page here, what that means is the slope of this indifference curve here is y over x, because that's our derivative of, so that was dx over dy, that's the partial derivatives there, equals y over x there. Okay, so that works. The issue with that though is that doesn't account that doesn't take into account prices. That just tells us the slope of this indifference curve everywhere is just y over x. That's the same for this indifference curve. That's the same for this indifference curve. Um, so there's some point on this line right there on this curve where that's the same slope as our purple line. 
this is the same slope as the purple line. That's the same slope as the purple line. Um, but it doesn't line up with the purple line. That's our budget line. We want to find where happiness, that indifference curve, lines up with that purple line. So to do that, we need to take into account the prices of waffles and calzones so that we can get the indifference curve to move down to the budget line. So to do that, if you remember from the lecture, I gave you a list of a whole bunch of different things that this marginal rate of substitution can be. It is the partial derivative of x over partial derivative of y. That's what we just found with Wolfram Alpha. But it's also the price of x over the price of y. And if we know that, we can actually set it equal to each other and we get an equation. So we know the price of x, that's waffles. Waffles were $1. And we know the price of y, that's calzones, they're $2. So if we set that equal to our slope, um, we can actually figure out the price attuned version of the marginal rate of substitution. Um, so that means we have, so is y over x, but we'll just erase this really quick because what we really have is we have y over x equals 1 over 2 because um, that's the ratio of prices there. If we do some algebra to make it so, it's, so it just says y equals, um, we get rid of, like, we just get y all by itself on one side. We can multiply, we can cross multiply, so we get y times 2. So we get 2y equals, and then cross multiply here equals x. We want to get the y by itself, so we divide both sides by 2. So we end up with y equals 1 half x. Okay, so that is the slope of, that's the equation of the indifference curve taking into account the prices of x and y, the prices of waffles and calzones here. So that's the equation we care about in this situation. Now we need to figure out where these two things equal each other. This is our purple line right here. And this is our indifference curve. We want to figure out where they are the same, where they intersect or where they are tangent. So to do that, we use a little bit of algebra and set them equal to each other. And oh. so we can rewrite them down here as negative 1 half x plus 10 equals 1 half x. So we're just taking this equation here and setting it equal to that equation. So this is our budget line or the marginal rate of transformation. This is our marginal rate of substitution. We're just setting them equal to each other and figuring out the numbers of x's and y's that make it maximum happiness. So we're down here. We just need to do some algebra to figure it out. So we can get the x by itself. So we just plus 1 half x plus 1 half x, which means 1 half x plus 1 half x equals just x equals 10. And that's our answer. The number, like the waffles that we need to consume to maximize happiness is 10. That's the X part. If we consume 10 waffles, that will maximize our happiness. So if we do that, how many calzones can we eat um, or consume? And to figure that out, we can either come to our graph and say we're doing 10 waffles. Um, so that puts us there. And then this is not the most accurate thing. It's supposed to be up at 5, whatever. Um, or you can just plug this 10 into one of the equations, either one. So we can say y equals 1 half times 10, which means y equals 5. Or if we plug it into this one, we can say y equals negative 1 half times 10, which is negative 5 plus 10 equals 5. So either one, it doesn't matter which, which one you plug it back into. That will tell us that the, maxim, the ideal number of calzones is 5. Um, so... That means we need to buy 10 waffles and five calzones, and that will maximize our happiness. That will get us the most utils possible given our budget constraint. Um, we can actually figure out the number of utils that we would get from that because we know that the formula for utility, um, let's erase this here. The formula for utility was, um, it was u equals xy. So that means u equals however many waffles we're doing, that's 10, 
times the number of calzones we're doing, which is five. So we're going to get 50 utils because of our consumption here. Um, again, those are fake numbers and they're different for everybody. So my 50 utils are not going to be the same as your 50 utils, um, but it's just a number. Um, but what that means is whatever indifference curve we have here, the 50 util indifference curve is going to cross our budget line right there at, or be tangent with our budget line right there at 10 and five. Um, this right here was not super accurate um, because I was just sketching it. So let me show you the shorter way of doing this in Wolfram Alpha, um, or not in Wolfram Alpha, in Desmos. So let's open up Desmos here so you can see how to do it here. Um, we still need to figure out the budget line, um, which we did before. We figured out, we, we drew it on the paper and figured out if we spent all of our money on calzones, that would let us get 10 calzones. And if we spent all our money on waffles, that would let us get 20 waffles. And so we got that equation that was y equals negative 0.5x plus 10. So that is our budget line. And if we zoom out, you can see this is what we had on the other screen but more accurate. Um, so it starts at 10, goes all the way down to 20 here. That's our budget, okay? Um, for the indifference curves, we have or the indifference, um, if we look back at the formula for utility, it says utility equals X times Y. We can't plot three different variables in Desmos here. Um, we don't have three different dimensions. Um, but what we can do is we can plot the indifference curve using just x and y, we just have to make up some utility number. So if we say like 60 equals x, y, there is our indifference curve for 60 utils. If we make an indifference curve for 10 utils, that would be 10 x, y. So every point on this green line here will generate 10 units of happiness. Every point on this blue line will generate 60 units of happiness. We can't be on this blue line at all because we can't afford it. Like it's beyond our budget line here. That's our budget. We can't go beyond it. So this blue line, we cannot achieve it. Um, so what we can do is we could either just mess with indifference curves until we get it to cross at this red line. So we could bump this down to 50 for instance. And look, they cross. Um, but that's not always going to work and sometimes it's going to get really tedious to just mess with these numbers until it lines up. So the more systematic way of doing it is to not just guess, but it's to do that same thing where we have, we had an equation for the marginal rate of substitution. Um, let's get rid of those. Where we figured out it was y equals one half x. Okay, so that was the price attuned marginal rate of substitution that we got that from Wolfram Alpha and then we set it equal to the ratio of prices and then rearranged it. Um, and if we plot that, notice how it crosses our budget line right there at 10 and five. That is where utility is maximized. 10 waffles, five calzones, that is the intersection that we care about. Okay, which shows us that that's the maximizing point. If we want to plot the indifference curve so that we can get it to be exactly tangent right there, then we can say what is five times 10 because that's the utility there. Um, and then we can say 50 equals x, y. And there's our indifference curve tangent perfectly right there at 10 and five. And that is where utility is maximized. So that is how you do it. Um, again, the process um, which you'll have on, you have on this page right here, um, you figure out the budget line first and the equation for that. And then you set that equal to the slope of the indifference curves, um, which you have to figure out using derivatives and Wolfram Alpha. And then you just set them equal to each other and either use algebra to figure out where they cross, or if you plot them, you can also figure out where they cross um, right there. And then you can plot the indifference curve if you want. You don't have to, um, but it does kind of help show um, all these different combinations of happiness that you can achieve, but you have to consume 10 and five to be on this on this curve. You can't be up here um, because you can't afford 15 calzones um, and three waffles. That's beyond your budget. Um, but you can consume right here that's within your budget and that gets you the happiest you can possibly be. So that is the uh, kind of a, a simple walkthrough for this.
Um, on this page, there's a more detailed walkthrough that explains step by step what we do. Um, and then in your problem sets, you'll have practice doing this and um, hopefully you get it. If not, email me, work in your groups, um, talk to me on Slack, um, get help. I'm here to help you and help you understand this.